Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Bruce Schwartz. To the best of my knowledge, there are four satellites, maybe five orbiting um, the moon. We know of Change 5, T1. I don't know if it's out there since 2005, 2008, something like that. It's been orbiting around. But aside from that, four others. And one in particular, the LRO, which is the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Let's talk a bit about the orbiter. And I want to talk a bit about its size. And I want to show some of my footage of what's comparable to maybe something being a satellite. Guys, some of you think that I'm capturing satellites. Well, let me tell you one thing. If it is a satellite that I'm capturing, I'd have to be pretty, pretty good, I think, or do something magical because a satellite's not big. <laughs> 390 centimeters. Come on, guys. 390 centimeters going at what? 50,000 kilometers an hour. I have no idea how fast it's traveling, but I don't know how big it would be if I was to catch it. But here's what the satellite looks like. Um, and here's some footage of what I think looks like a panel spiraling around. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, we could see it, but wow. It would have to be pretty... My telescope would, would be getting something very, very small. 390 centimeters. That would... It's hard to believe. The satellites, the way they travel, well, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter in particular, is in a polar orbit. It's one in which a satellite passes above and nearly above both poles. So it's going from north to south. It's spiraling around up and down, not east to west. It's actually going from north to south. And it's moving over a little bit each time. LOLA device data provides three complementary views of the near side of the moon. The topography, along with maps of the surface, slope values, and the roughness of the topography. All three views are centered on the relatively young impact crater Tycho. Now, these um, satellites are UFOs. I'm pretty sure they're UFOs. And again, it's not traveling north to south. So right off the bat, right? It's easy, common sense. This is a UFO that is higher elevated off the surface of the moon, obviously in a more stable orbit. And um, we're able to see them very well, which I haven't seen with the 14 yet. I'm very surprised I haven't. Somebody asked me just this week um, about why the cameras that NASA has on the orbiter and Lola, exactly, you know, for example, would be better than the cameras we have because we're talking get this 20 inches per pixel <laughs> okay so Tycho centers peak two kilometers high a boulder in the center on top that I've heard of it before I'm looking now in the photo this is a very very high resolution photo my gosh I think it's 10 miles wide it's incredible I'm zooming up to 98 percent okay and I'm getting you'll see a tiny bit of blur once I'm completely zoomed in, like the whole frame is going to be just that top mountain part there. And here we are. And now here, another photo by NASA. In the public domain, these photos, by the way, they have no copyrights. Uh, they all can be viewed uh, for yourselves. Just look them up on Wikipedia. So, yeah. What are we looking at, though? You know, are these photos real? Because we've never seen the dark side. And not just that. Um, NASA, the the data, the illustrations they give us, we never see any real data, not even Hubble data, not any data gathered by them. We never see the real thing. It is extremely rare. So if this is, you know, really the dark side, well, so be it. Okay, but I don't know. It looks pretty plain in the dark side. I was expecting a lot more. This is Theophilus Crater, bordering Mare Nectaris. To the right of it, Cyrilus Crater. Look, what's there? Well, look in the depth. First of all, I thought it was pretty cool. Something off the edge of the moon that we can see. And listen, right off the bat, um, you know, we don't see the stars in the photos of the moon landings and stuff like that. It's very rare. So when you see an object there, that's where I'm catching the objects arriving on the moon anyways. 
those lights arrive to the side of the moon and descend into the gray surface and disappear. And that's exactly what they do. And I'm positive this is either a star or could possibly be a UFO. They're all over the place, even hard to hide. And, you know, NASA doesn't really does not seem to be hiding them. How can how can these objects be inside of these photos? These are high resolution photos. What is this bloody object? It's natural. Everything on the surface of the moon is said to be natural. I just, I'm sorry, I don't believe it. No way in hell are some of these objects natural. <laughs> it's a built object. Maybe I'm wrong, okay? And I am sure maybe some areas I am mistaken. Maybe. Actually, I'm not very sure about that. It's getting pretty crazy out there, guys. Now, here's my shot of Theophilus, Crater, Cyrilus in the middle, Katharina to the right. We see all these high elevated, uh, you know, objects. And there's something about the lunar reconnaissance orbiter photos. Listen, they're clear. Yes, high resolution. But when you zoom into a photo, you always see more detail. But why not theirs? Well, it's the metadata, the metadata that's inside of the photo. I have a protection on my editor here that if I want, I can make it so that if somebody um, tries to edit the photo, it will blotch. It, this is all in metadata, simple programs. All these so long me were being used way back. And once this technology was known, before selling it to the public, um, the camera technology it was used for um, intelligent reason, intelligence reasons, for sure, secret intelligence. Speaking of amazing images, the James Webb Space Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope is a space telescope developed in collaboration. We're talking NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian, the Canadian, the Canadian Space Agency that will be the scientific successor to the Hubble Telescope. So this baby is gonna replace Hubble telescopes. Can you imagine the images they can get with this? The, the primary mirror is composed of 18 hexagonal mirror segments made of gold coated beryllium. These combine to create a mirror with a diameter of 6.5 meters, 21 feet and four inches, much larger than the Hubble's 2.4 meter, 7.9 small foot mirror. <laughs> the telescope will be deployed in the space near Earth and the Sun. The Webb Telescope comes with a cost of 10 billion US dollars. Hubble Space Telescope, a space telescope that was launched into low orbit in 1990, remains in operation still today. Although not the first space telescope, Hubble is one of the largest and most versatile and is well known as both a vital research tool and a public relations boon for astronomy. The Hubble Telescope's mirror is 7.9 feet, which is 2.4 meters. Hubble's four main instruments observe in the near ultraviolet, visible and near infrared spectrum. Hubble's orbit outside the distortion of Earth's atmosphere allows it to take extremely high resolution images with substantially lower background light than ground-based telescopes. Hubble has recorded some of the most detailed visible light images ever seen, allowing a deep view into space and time. Cam McLean, bro, thanks again for all the support, the contributions, for being there in the community, man, and for following, for believing in me, and for being a part of this amazing community. I really appreciate it. If anyone has UFO videos they'd like to send to me, please send them to Bruce Swartz 75 a commercial gmail.com and please don't forget to leave a name for me to mention thanks a lot for the support everyone